Hi. Uh, can you give us an update on any injuries? It seems like uh, Marcus Jeep is making some good progress. He's making good progress, which is really positive, but um, uh, nowhere near contention for, for match play yet. So, But we're, we're happy with that. Um, other than that, we're, we're all pretty good. We've got a fit squad. So, my selection problems, I suppose. Barkley, okay. Ross is fine. Yeah, Ross is fine. Tomorrow is fine. Yeah, yeah for selection. Um, Giroud is fine. They're all fine, I think. <laughs> Um, have you noticed a, a, a mental change in your players in training or anything like that since you've been going through this quite tough run, this run of inconsistent results? No, no, in a good way. Um, we've got a good spirit, a good group. Um, the questions obviously start to be asked of, you, of yourselves in-house when you get some difficult results. Uh, and it's important to be very upfront and honest and um, with each other um, and obviously from my point of view and uh, I see a positive group in training I see a team training hard I see a group that are together um, so that's all I can ask for now of course we need the uh, the results to turn back a little bit because the last few we're not happy with Has this been your toughest spell personally as a manager or have you had to deal with something as tough as this before? I had it last year um, and I think every manager has it to a degree maybe not Jurgen Klopp for a long time but pretty much everybody else um, because it's the nature of the Premier League, the nature of what we're in. So there's been some real positives and it's, I think it's very important not to get caught up in the negatives of a, a few difficult results because we've qualified for the next stage of the Champions League. We're in full position, which I don't think many people would have given us that in coming towards Christmas. So, of course, at the moment, we know we can do better in recent games, but I think the big picture is we need to be confident and positive and keep moving forward. Uh, you've already said that you want to strengthen the team in January, particularly in a creative role left by Eden Hazard. Is there any other areas that you think you might focus on in January? Mm, only areas that are in my head and discussions we have in-house. So um, until January starts, we won't get too far with that. But um, yeah, it, things that I see, I'm not going to divulge in public now. What's the most important thing is Tottenham and the games in the interim. Yeah, speaking of Tottenham, there's a, when Spurs play Chelsea, it's always a massive match, it's always a fiery match. but. Does it have an extra special touch for you being against your old boss? Um, yeah, I, su I suppose so. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go up against Jose because I think for me to play under him as a as a player and it was big influence on my my career. Um, to go up against him last year for Derby against Manchester United was a big deal for me, and you know that that remains. I'll always have respect for him for for that side of it. The bigger thing is Chelsea Tottenham and uh, what that rivalry means, what it should mean to our players and us um, because that's the beauty of, of football it's rivalries it's what you feel about your club and what our fans, fans will demand on Sunday is that we show on the pitch what they feel watching the game which is absolute passion to win the game uh, and just a, a, a word on uh, Arteta who looks like he's obviously off to Arsenal and uh, Carlo Ancelotti to Everton anything surprise you about those two appointments particularly Arteta being that he's uh, going to be managing for the first time at such a big club? Um, nothing surprises me and those two possible appointments do not because on both sides I know the credentials of Carlo Ancelotti, don't we all? So, um, had an incredible career, he's a fantastic man, so it doesn't surprise me. And Arteta is obviously at different ends of his managerial career, um, but I think from looking from the outside and not knowing that well, see how he carries himself, I think he'll be a really positive appointment if they make that. Um, because he's obviously a very intelligent football man, uh, diligent, um, and it will be a big opportunity for him if that's the case. Thank you. John, hi Frank. After Saturday, have you sat down with the players at a meeting and chat with them, or is it just work on the training ground? How do you approach we've worked on the We've worked on the training ground more than speak too much. It's, uh, it's been a busy week for, for the longer week that it is. Pre-Christmas, there are responsibilities for the players uh, and for myself, commitments through the week. But we have focused completely on training and of course we'll have meetings in the build-up to the game. Well, Jose, obviously you've spent a long time with him. Is the one thing that you, you would take from learning from him, is the one specific thing that you'd say, yeah, that, that's what he was really good at, that you'd take with you into your career? Not one thing, no. Not one thing. He's a good manager. Loads of good attributes. But um, I wouldn't try to be a clone of, of anything. No, I wouldn't. How different proposition of Tottenham now do you think now Jose's there? Well, always difficult. Um, when you see a team that made it to the Champions League final last year, 
Um, he's been a regular top four team for the last few years. They've got incredible talent in their team, world-class talent um, and threats. Then they're always difficult. Um, and Jose is a top manager, so it becomes a it stays a very difficult match. You've had some good performances away from home. The away, the away record is slightly better than the home one this season. Mm. In a way, you're a bit more comfortable at the moment playing away? Uh, possibly, and that's something we need to address. Um, and we can talk about that maybe pre Southampton, but um, yeah, away from home, we've got good results. But I don't think it's always home or away the issue. It's more maybe type of game as well, because we've played a lot of games recently. Teams are defending against us. We haven't been able to break them down or take our chances. Um, and then we've conceded the occasional goal, which has turned the game against us. So you would expect Tottenham will be a different animal. You have to take each game as it is at face value with the players they have and the threats they have and their home crowd behind them. We might see a slightly different match. Yeah, and as we approach Christmas, from what you were just saying there, you actually think maybe you're slightly ahead of where you thought you might be? I didn't make expectations on positions. I was talking more really about what I felt and what I heard from the outside about what people expected of us because of the ban and because of the players we lost. So my, my expectations are always pretty much week to week. Can we win the next game? I just find any memorable moments for you from Chelsea Tottenham games? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, I, I, we, we had a lot of good moments um, and also a couple of bad ones um, and they always stick in your mind and sometimes as much but um, um, they, they are not important on Sunday. My moments or memories from yesteryear, um, what's important is what we do on the pitch. Liam. <laughs> Frank, I hear a lot of coaches talk about lack of training time at this time of year, playing virtually every three days. Mm. How valuable has this week been to maybe have a little bit more time to focus on certain things tactically? Yeah, well, it feels valuable for that. And in the beginning of the week, it was some uh, much needed rest because I don't like to call upon tiredness as an excuse, but I think um, the last performance at, at home where we didn't show the edge that we normally have been shown in terms of chance creation, we could maybe look at a bit of tiredness. So that was important. And then the, the chance to work has been important. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had a week to work out here, which means you can do things more physical, more active. Um, so it feels valuable at the moment and, and we'll see. And also, um, since your time as a player, the, the Chelsea Spurs rivalry sort of shifted in terms of results a little bit. Away games used to be a lot better for Chelsea than maybe they are, it's a bit more even. Um, how do you feel that the rivalry sits now and, and do you feel maybe Chelsea have responsibility to try and reassert them, themselves against Tottenham? No, I think the, the it, it should be relatively even when you look at the clubs and when you look at in the last, I mentioned the last four years, it's where for the last two or three where Chelsea and Tottenham have both been fighting out to try and get into the top four and because they've got they had a fantastic manager in Pochettino who built an incredible team with some young talent and players who brought in and an idea and and uh, that made them a big challenge not just for Chelsea but for every team in the Premier League we've seen that so I don't think it's about who gets the heads up on each other it's going to always be a competitive fixture OK, we'll finish the broadcast with Martin That was half my question really <coughs> but just to ask you about the team selection on the back of perhaps the most disappointing result you've had this season Frank hmm. and having everybody available is this going to be one of the hardest team selections for you since you've come to the club? Um, they are all hard because of the, the squad, the nature of a Premier League squad um, and everybody wants to play. But I, I know what you mean and uh, a lot of people are fit. Now we have decent numbers um, and a competitive squad. They're all show, showing that in training and I have to, to choose what I feel is right. And yeah, off the back of a result, I think that the edginess that that brings, uh, not having a positive result last week through training has been good. So players are trying to push the show they want to be in this big game. So it makes it quite difficult, yeah. If you're out of the team and they lose to Bournemouth, you want to be in the team the next week, basically. That's yeah. That's what you're having to deal with, I guess. Yeah, and the, and the rules are always the same. It's what you do day in, day out that gets you back in that team. And not just every Saturday or every match day, it's every training session and, and how you are around the group and all those things. So I take all of those into account. Okay, cameras off please.